Yeah, you okay. can hear it on the phone. So apparently it wasn't working. There we go. Little bats flying around. Yeah, no, it's all around here. I'm going to um, share it now. So I'll share the new one. Oh, that was not good. You're not worried. Don't worry about anything. Uh, well, I just got on my phone. Oh. I think it's I'm an iPhone. Right You're good. Yeah, I think they can uh, take a little moisture now. My phone's going to smell like booze for the next three weeks. It didn't already smell like booze? It probably does. <laughs> I'm surrounded by booze all the time. All right now, I'm waiting for people to join. Do you like that? Um... Yeah, chicken cock. All right, so we'll talk about that. Um, that that was one of the ones that I've I've actually enjoyed uh, that I got from Calandros. Not expensive. Well, I guess it's fifty dollars. But um, it's actually been a, a pretty good drink. I don't know if anybody's given you any uh, feedback on that or not. There we go. We got it back, Andrew. I think we should be good. Are we live? Are you going with the intro? Are you rolling the intro or no? That E. H. Taylor bear barrel proof. Uh, somebody's already uh, asking about that. that. Yeah, we'll roll the intro. Let me see if I can get the intro going. Um, we'll do a little intro here. I don't know if it's gonna work. Welcome to the Durante Jones Bourbon Club, where we pay tribute to the baddest defensive coordinator in all the land. And his love for bourbon. Oh, yeah. Now, your hosts, Matt and Chris. Okay, here we are. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. It must be the Wi-Fi Take out two. Here. Yes. All right. So, all right, guys. Durante Jones Bourbon Club. Nobody could hear us the first time, so here we are the second time. And uh, we wanted to talk to you guys tonight about our new bourbon club. So, the Durante Jones Bourbon Club, in honor of our new defensive coordinator, Durante Jones. Uh, man, uh, here's to you, Durante. Here's to you, Coach. Um, violent, violent defense, I think is yes. what he said. So uh, once he got hired, everybody snooped around on his Instagram and we could see his amazing bourbon collection. Yes, and so I wanted to do this. Uh, I wanted to do this bourbon club in honor of him. Um, we have got the Oak Hills Bourbon Club in the background. Yeah, we got some other people coming in too. So they're going to be walking in and out. Uh, you'll probably see them coming and making drinks every now and then too. So uh, check that out. But here with Chris. Me and Chris are going to be your hosts uh, for the Durante Jones Bourbon Club. We both love LSU. We both love bourbon. So a great combination that go hand in hand. Exactly. So, um, and, uh, you know, with LSU and bourbon is kind of synonymous, especially you know, I remember going to games when in, in the student section and people throwing bourbon all over the place. Um, all of my college memories smell like this right here. Exactly. Bourbon smoke. Not this good. Of bourbon. Yeah, not you're right. Yeah, it was uh, Soco and, <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah. a mixture of Soco and Crown. <laughs> Jim Beam. And Jim Beam. Beam. Yeah, I about to say it was Beam. Jim Beam. Yeah, it was me. plastic bottle Beam. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that fit in the back of your pants? So, guys, we are we are joined. We're in Oak Hills. Uh, we're joined by Taylor Calandro with Calandros uh, right here at Perkins and Seekin, correct? Yeah. yeah Five so. minutes down the road. Two minutes down the road, actually. That's right. You're right down the street. So came right came right out of work. Came you right out of work. There you go. I grew up in this neighborhood, so it always brings back memories. There you yeah. go. Nice. I've been in this neighborhood. I've probably been in this neighborhood longer than all y'all. Yeah, so. I bet you have. Yeah. And this is an old house, man. You walked through it. Um, this house has been here since 1959. So 
they got a big yard on the lake and all that, but it's an old house. It's got some old plumbing. So <laughs> uh, when that freeze happens, I was nervous. Yeah. I was very nervous. I have a tree snapped right back here. You can see it. Another um, one there too. Yeah, I got a yeah. pine tree that's about to come down. So uh, anyway, we wanted to uh, do this. We, we're going to be very free, free flowing on this show. Anybody obviously has any bourbon questions, you can bring them on, um, but it's going to be very lighthearted. Um, you've already told me that you're tired of, you don't want to answer any bourbon questions. You're done with bourbon today. No, don't ask me any bourbon questions. <laughs> yeah. We're done with bourbon. It's not um, why I came here today. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's he letting we loose. Were just drinking bourbon. <laughs> Taylor's letting loose. He's smoking a cigar. Yeah. They told right. me I was coming for free bourbon and, <laughs> and talk sports. Yeah. Just to be on a podcast. And then they told me how to talk about bourbon. That's right. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm drinking, uh, old Forester 1920. Yes. I'm drinking um, the rabbit hole good. Derringer. Rabbit hole, okay. And then what are you what are you drinking? That Canadian uh, well, club? Uh, no, I, I, I <laughs> the the uh, uh, the Canadian club is a super old bottle that I brought, but I, no, I'm not drinking that. I'm okay. drinking the chicken cock. Yeah, I I, I bought that from Calandros. Chicken I, cock. This is my second. Uh, how you, how's that cock taste? The cock tastes good. <laughs> yeah, and, and and for for those of the y'all watching or or whatever. <laughs> the one of the first times that i went on because uh, every wednesday i do f uh, the last uh segment of the three o'clock hour from at moscona and one of the first times that i did the show was probably six seven months ago we talked about chicken cock for 15 minutes oh <laughs> oh and he was like a little uh, kid in the candy store with that one huh yeah 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 he, uh, was uh was ryan terrio with him terrio <laughs> But um, after the after that, Jacob Hester said he was he messaged me on Twitter and said that he was literally on the ground for that whole segment. <laughs> Crying, laughing, and it was just like the second segment that I had with Matt, and I was like, "Oh my God, is this, if this is how it's going to go, it's going to be awesome." Yeah, um, but yeah, no, segment. it's chicken cock, just a funny thing. But the whiskey's good, actually. It's actually yeah, it's uh, fifty dollar, fifty five, something like that. Fifty fifty five bucks, yeah um it's, it's a good pour so first time i've had it so it's good it is yeah. okay um I, 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 contrary to everybody's belief you don't just drink all I, day we, <laughs> we do i i probably drink more at work than i do at home which is probably foreign to a lot of people but when it's part of your job but you, you don't necessarily enjoy it all the time yeah <laughs> um <laughs> no I, I honestly i get sick of tasting things sometimes it's just crazy that's as that sounds um I, I don't even taste wine anymore i rarely taste wine anymore i i was thinking about getting into wine a little bit more Wine's a whole different ball game it is yeah. it's um uh, and it, i'm i'm a big i'm a cab guy if i drink wine but yeah it's it's just different for me i i don't know i don't know if it's because i'm, I'm used to drinking like a soda chilled or something like that and i always have ice with a bourbon but like it's so warm uh, so, or, so, so it's a temperature thing for you i it, think it might you be. know and and my mom um shout out to my mom she lives in the neighborhood <laughs> too um she she only drinks white wine because she doesn't like drinking red wine at the temperature you're supposed to drink it at. okay now she she started to venture into chilled red wine a little bit um mm -hmm. but yeah sometimes it's a temperature thing for people what is your thoughts on the chilled red wine because it always blows my mind when i see people drop a few ice cubes in a cab or something and I'm well like, uh, you're not supposed to do no that. i know that it, it blows my mind and, and, and you know those uh the, they have those life hack things that you see on facebook like these stupid videos kitchen hacks and all this shit the it, ice it, rods and everything yeah it's, but what you're supposed to do with red wine if you want to chill it and it's not chilled already for you you freeze red grapes and drop them in yeah and then it doesn't affect the flavor no oh, okay bit. gotcha they, I'm they, down they, with that. they freeze they're, they're gonna thaw but they're not thawing into water right 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 i mean i'm sure you're getting a little moisture from the grape or whatever but right. if you freeze the grapes and you put them in your wine well i, I don't know i don't know if everybody knows this but wine is grapes <laughs> what <laughs> what <I know. laughs> that's that's why they brought an expert on the show today. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I appreciate. The I fact thought we were just going to talk about bourbon. Yeah, I thought I appreciate the fact that the first three well, minutes I, here we're talking know, about I say, wine. I say wine is grapes. That actually, Louisiana wine is mostly not grapes. Yeah. So, uh, and it's horrible and sweet. Um, but yeah, wine is grapes, and so it naturally it, it, people don't think to do that. If if you freeze grapes, you can put them in your in your red wine. Okay. 
Uh, speaking of Louisiana, I, I heard you talk about this on Moscone show today. Um, and I, I commented to him that Sugarfield, uh, you yeah. went out there recently, right? Yeah. I met with uh, Drew over there too. So, yeah, Andrew Salto and yep. his brother. I, I can't even remember his brother's name. I've, I, I, uh, I know, I know you're talking about he's, he's, a, a, he's, he's a doctor. He, yeah, he's an OB at, um, I think he's, a, 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 he is a, um, what do you call the, the preemie, the uh, preemie babies? Um, premature babies no 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 but but he he, he works in the the premium tiny unit. babies tiny the babies NICU. the NICU. He, he is a NICU doctor gotcha. gotcha okay he's a NICU doctor and i and i don't know how anybody anybody could do that job oh i know that's rough that's and they make spirits cool. in their spare time um he, yes. well, he's a part owner the, the brother is doing it full time and yeah, I, yeah andrew's and, doing it full time and, and his brother and his is the brother one that's kind of like eventually okay. going to start doing it full time because i think he wants to get out of the they would love to retire and be in yeah. like a distillery and business. He's, he's a fairly young guy but I, I that job has to be very very stressful Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Very stressful, yeah. and um, I, bourbon's a little more relaxed. And it, but 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 they're not only doing bourbon; they're oh, doing yeah. uh, rum. I know they produce or get the Matador vodka, mm-hmm. um, which I think we sell. We used to sell. I don't know if we have any right now, but um, it's also a local thing. I walked through the whole back with him. Uh, gin, rum, um, a lot of rum actually. Yep. a lot of different flavored rum because he's getting a lot of uh, local. Uh, sure game. yeah and and he's getting like local uh, he'll do like a uh, uh satsuma rum yep. and nice. satsuma you know different whatever he can get his hands on he'll he'll turn it into a like a craft yeah. cocktail um you know spirit if, if, if first i mean the distillery is, is a professional operation I've, I've been there uh it's just a mini kentucky distillery yeah so so, so they're doing it right and rum naturally is the spirit that louisiana should be because we have so much sugar of sugarcane yeah yeah, yeah. i Absolutely. mean you, you can make rum from sugarcane uh, but and, and i say that there are a lot of rum producers in louisiana yeah um you got uh cane land which now is three roll that's in baton rouge um you got bayou and lake charles which is a big time uh thing now and, right. and and there's a few more um rums but r- r- rum is should be the natural spirit of the state yeah. i try a bottle of that bourbon uh feel bourbon and it's different um i it, i i could easily say it's not for everybody's taste yeah. i've tasted it and the, you know it's funny i was doing my podcast and i have four roses right next to it mm-hmm. which is just a go-to for me too um, and I was, I poured some of the sugar field first and I took a sip of it and I was like, I, I don't know, this doesn't taste right. And then I taste the four roses and I'm like, okay, that's yeah. what I am used to. I, I just think it's my palate. I felt the probably. same way, but I did the Caneland tour, um, a while back. Yeah. Caneland has one as well. And I felt the same way when I tasted it. They have a bottle. bourbon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they have a bourbon. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. I, I, got, um, that was after I tasted a bunch of rums, but still. I yeah. The right. Same so, way. It's, just, yeah. it's different. It's a little it's, different. Uh, it was called, uh, is it OMFB? Yeah, old right. Mississippi floated bourbon. Yes, um, which it's they floated the barrels from Kentucky to uh, Baton Rouge on the Mississippi River. Supposedly, the logistic. Do, do you know the logistics of how that? <laughs> that sounds like it's an intense operation. That's actually a really good question because I've literally sat there and thought about how the hell they did that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I what wonder I'm how the tugboats is, get up and down the river, let alone a bunch of barrels of whiskey. I'm thinking it's just like a corral in the river um, with barrels floating on it. I would have yeah. loved – they should they, – they they missed a really good opportunity, and I don't even know if they were involved with the process of actually getting the barrels here, a really good opportunity to, like, you know, film or take pictures of how the hell they did that. Yeah, I'd watch that um, documentary. Because in a, our mind, we think that they're, like, click-clacking down the river, but really right. it's probably just – submerged in the water between two barges or something and it's right you know, like, like, like in some kind of corral or yeah. something like that but um, i want to see them like washing up and click clacking off the rocks yeah i mean <laughs> I, or they could have just thrown them in and they just floated down they just got here I, <laughs> I have no idea i mean some people kayak from like minnesota to louisiana yeah. um on that's the, fucking uh, retarded uh, no it happened <laughs> i got a buddy i got a buddy that did it so uh, my buddy max zigby who lives here in baton rouge um he's a uh, a video producer shout out uh loop theory studios is him but um they actually did that and they they filmed the whole thing a documentary they kayaked the entire mississippi river i've seen and, that yeah i, it's I, I don't know if it was them but i've seen people that do it that you got to be out of your mind to do yeah. that man 
I mean, he told me some stories about like lightning storms and just crazy weather situations. I cannot even imagine. And then just big water. I mean, once you get in a big water, I cannot imagine. It starts small up there, but yeah. by the time you get down here, and I mean, even in the central part of the country, Missouri and all that, it's, uh, I would not want to be in a kayak. No, no, no. Hey, Brent Simino is in the chat. We have a pitching duel so far. Uh, ULL and LSU are playing tonight. Brent, give us a uh, – if, if anybody can keep us up to, to, to date with uh, what's happening in that game, give us some little updates in the chat if you can. Um, we are – so tell me about Durante Jones and your, when, whenever you saw his Instagram – you saw these uh, pictures just start floating. Did you? Were you like, "Oh, hello"? Yeah. <laughs> uh, naturally, first thing I thought was, "Man, I'm about to pick up a, a, another a good customer. client." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Has he that, made contact yet? That, no, I, I haven't talked to him. And I have they started practicing? Um, they are doing some. I don't know if it's some like official practice, or, yeah. but it's some workouts. Yeah. I'm assuming he's in town. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, he's definitely in town. I'm, he I'm, is I'm in assuming town. he's in, he's yeah. in town, and I'm assuming eventually. <laughs> he would make his way to us um, somehow. So um, I think everybody's trying to reach out to him right now. This is so true. I've, is I true. haven't We're, reached out to him, but I'm assuming he's go going to make it. I, look, I've, I've met how I met Matt Moscona was at Calander supermarket. He was buying whiskey. as a client, as right. a client. Right. Um, and I've met, other people doing the same. I, I've uh, I've become actually I've become really good friends with Greg McElroy. Okay. Um. Yeah, because he'll come in town whenever he comes in town. He's a huge bourbon guy. Right? Yes, he's okay. a huge. We'll have to get we'll have to get McElroy on the podcast. Gre yeah. uh, um. He's a huge huge bourbon guy, and he was coming through. Uh, SEC Network had an LSU game. Mm -hmm. I can't, it was two years ago, and somebody came in the back and said greg mcelroy's in, in the store right now you're like wait what <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> that's like when i got a phone call from cecil collins and i'm like what the fuck <laughs> i was like you're full of shit greg, uh, greg mcelroy is not in the store um and since then i mean we 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 obviously took care of him and um since then they we've we've become friends so that's awesome yeah what that's a good buy? connection what was his preference do you remember what he wanted a lot oh oh yeah all right he uh he walked in the back huh he got a tour of <laughs> calandra supermarket so he gets wild post game is that what you're saying uh yeah 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 uh, greg's a good dude he, uh, he 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 just likes peter bourbon. burns too um I've, I've heard him and peter burns are both big bourbon guys yeah he likes uh, peter burns he, he, he's brought some of the uh what's the guy that does the sidelines for him uh, uh cole kublik not kublik it's the other guy with the glasses i can't think of his name oh either. um i know who you're talking about he does a lot of high school stuff too um uh, and and an, another announcer for uh, but he, he's brought more guys other guys through with there that's awesome i've met marcus spears through him um nice. and marcus is a good dude yeah um really, I, really I have i guy. have a few clients that that know him really well too and they're Very just like nice, he's just such genuine, a great guy yeah. he, he comes across that way on tv and he really really is uh really really nice guy um all right so andrew fam in the chat says uh for some reason i thought uh durante would be joining oh, us too <laughs> gotcha Full disclosure well, we really did too sorry um, you're gonna have to we're working on yeah it. you're settling for taylor calandro instead we have reached out to durante to Durante Jones about his club. Uh, we would love for Durante Jones to join his club. Um, we're waiting to hear back from him, Michael Bonnet, and LSU, and I probably will hear from LSU at some point <laughs> in some way. Um, Especially but, if he decides not to join the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, which we, means Calandro Supermarket will be hearing from Michael Bonnet. That's right. Uh, Calandros and Bogies, you <laughs> see them side by side on our uh, screen. They will both be hearing from LSU, I'm sure. Is that bats? That's Mexican That's, squealers. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anyway. Um. All right. So <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh. So yeah. We. If anybody knows um Durante Jones or knows how to reach Durante Jones, we would be very interested in him joining us. Um. Jackson in the uh, in the chat says Helmer's home run. I think he's lying to me. Um, yeah, that's Will Helmer's like probably in the lineup, and he's probably not hitting right now. Like so that, 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 that ain't. <laughs> How happening. is LSU baseball this year? Uh, I'm, I'm not. I, I I grew up playing baseball, so I'm not a big baseball fan. If that makes any sense, mm -hmm. um, I just can't stand. I, I think baseball is a very boring sport. 
I, I I hate Major League Baseball. Same. Um, I can't get co- into it. College baseball. Playoff I can Major get League into. Baseball is legit though. Yep. If it was yeah, I, like agree. That, I agree. I agree. The, the the playoffs are intense for Major League Baseball. Yep. And I but, enjoy watching that. Um, LSU this year. I think the problem is, and it, this is all because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, Major League Baseball draft was shortened last year, so there's a lot of kids that. Uh, came to college that normally would be in the minors because right. they would have gotten some, such a huge signing bonus last year. Um, so there's guys that are normally not in college, plus they gave all the seniors or everybody else an extra year of eligibility in college. And so a lot of those guys took it. So now you have five recruiting classes full of guys. They, they've also increased the roster limits. Um, so you can have a lot of guys on on your roster, but you you have guys that like, Vanderbilt was the example that I was seeing the other day, which was the, they have this guy, Kumar Rocker, who was like the man last year. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, oh, yeah. you throw in like 100 mile an hour. Mm-hmm. And a badass pitcher name. Oh, well, crazy. It, Kumar, God, yeah. Uh, Rocker uh, for the strikeout. Um, but they have another guy that just came in as a freshman, Jack Leiter, Al Leiter's son. Al Leiter played in the majors yeah. for like 20 years. Jack Leiter is throwing 100 miles an hour as a freshman. And he would never have been on campus normally. Is he tall um, and lanky? Tall and lanky. He threw a three pitch strikeout the other night. It was 99, 98, and 100. Lord. He's not going to be there very long. Well, he's going to be there for three years. Uh, that, I, I can't keep up with this That's stupid the thing. eligibility rules. Yeah, it's I don't in, think baseball, I know it either. Yeah, in baseball, not... it's three years. Well, it, either um, straight out of high school or correct. three years. Yes. And okay. I, I think that's okay. what they should do for so basketball. Stupid. They is, should yeah, do that. Yeah, I basketball. agree. Basketball's got But change. basketball. They, they don't. You can't come straight out of high school, right? Anyway, uh, no, you can't anymore. go out. Of, you gotta do one. Year. That's why it's one and done. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you had the option, you could do straight out of high school, or you can be three years in college. How much better would that make college it's, basketball? Yeah. It, and, and for basketball, it's not even one and done. It's it's a semester and done. That's yes. all it this is. is. True. Yeah, this is true. Because the second half of the year, those guys could care less. Checking out. Yeah. I, I, I've heard most of them don't even report to class or anything the second half of no, of their yeah, freshman absolutely. Year, ben, so. ben Simmons was completely yep. checked out. Yep. Uh, when I he think came he was here. checked out when he got here. Yes, I don't oh, think he yeah. ever went to class. He he looked lost on the court. <laughs> um, he was one of the most frustrating LSU basketball players I think I've ever watched. I agree. And they talk about people talk about the greats, and they mention him as like an LSU great. No. Like not at all. Like I, mean, I just he, don't. He was I a don't... very talented player. Yeah, he was, a yeah. very, he was one of the high, uh, highest recruits that LSU basketball has ever landed. He yes. was a, he was a landmark recruit. Blah blah blah. He could have cared less to play at I LSU. Agree. Yep, he was looking Sorry. for the next thing. I agree because I I love LSU football. Basketball is my second thing. Yeah. So I'm kind of into basketball. My, my I dad too. grew up. Love basketball. Love 80s and 90s basketball. Yeah. All and that. I, I grew up going to games. I love going to LSU basketball games. I, I I went to the Pelicans game Sunday. It was an awesome game, too. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. You went and saw Zion. Um, went and saw Zion, and they played Boston and went overtime. They were down oh, 20. That was a fantastic game. game. Dude, that, that was, was like a playoff game. game. It, it was. And, I mean, there was nobody in the stands, really. It was probably. I don't know what the Smoothie King Center's doing. It's just like ten percent, maybe, and it's like, like six thousand fans or something. It like that. didn't see. Yeah. I don't think it was six thousand. It had to be two, maybe. They did a good job pumping in the crowd noise because I was watching at home. They do pump in the juiced. crowd noise. I was. I, it sounded like it was a packed house. It yeah, was, but it was uh, awesome. we we also. I mean, it, it, the fans there were loud. I mean, it was it was a good game. It, they they were getting blown out in the third quarter, and then they came back, and I was like, "There's no way they're going to win this game." They ended up winning the game. Yep. Yeah, it was awesome. Good game. Uh, Chad uh, Vining says, is Jones joining in? Uh, who wants to tell him? Uh, <laughs> Coach Jones is not joining us tonight. Yeah. Uh, if you know him and you want to invite him into his bourbon club, please do so. We would love to have uh, Durante Jones join us. Um, all right, so what were some of the bottles that he had that were like, okay, this is – very impressive yeah, what, collection. What stood out? To Do you, you remember? Well, he, from what I saw, I'm gonna have to look at the Instagram picture again, but I could tell. I, I can tell when it's an amateur mm-hmm. collection from, from somebody that has a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and when it's somebody that has a lot of money, who knows what they're doing? Yes. Yep. Um, his collection went beyond. Um pappy and stuff like that yeah he, i think he had some four roses limited edition small batches um he he, he had hard just to get stuff and it was but, in quantity too i feel yeah. like he had multiple bottles of 
Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. And, I saw and, a couple E.H. Taylor. I mean, well, I, was, I saw not only that, but I also saw him going to restaurants and ordering really nice cocktails. And it yep. was like, okay, this is a guy who really appreciates. Right. And I, I think that's your difference is like guys who just collect. Um, just to collect. Yeah, because it's a cool thing to yeah. do, or guys who actually appreciate enjoy it, it. And, yep. and enjoy it and open it. And all we that. talked about that a few minutes ago, and that was something me being the common man on this show talking about bourbon was the more and more I want to try some of these popular bottles. I laugh because so many of the bourbon enthusiasts you see on social media are talking about, oh, you know, blends. It's just not that good. You know, it, it, it's okay. It's overrated. It's not that good. Well, then why are you guys scooping it up all the time? Like, why can the common man who wants to get into bourbon not find the Weller 12 or the the E.H. Taylor or the blends if you guys are not, you know what I'm saying? It just it, it totally throws me off. I don't get it. So, um, but I'm sure you guys are dealing with that nonstop, huh, Taylor? Yeah, I mean, and like you mentioned, Blantons, and it, it, it it's Blantons is a perfect storm of collectability, and the juice is decent. It's nothing I would chase after, and yeah. I don't think without the the horse and the collectability factor of the, the horses for Blantons that it would be the way it is. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it's a good single barrel bourbon. It is not worth chasing. Right. To me. Or the yeah, aftermarket prices that people it, pay for. Is it a marketing scheme? It's a marketing scheme, but I mean, the juice is good, though. I mean, the juice is good. I, I do enjoy Blanton's when I drink it. I, I, I think it's a decent pour. Now, it's, but like I said, I th- 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 there are bourbons on, that sit on the shelf and collect dust that I think are better than bourbon, than Blanton's. Yeah. Yes. So, um, well, it, it, it's kind of like the difference in uh, Pappy's and Weller, like Weller 12. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love Weller 12, but it, it basically that's it's almost the same thing. What's the differences between the two? Yeah. And, and so, so Blanton's, Weller, uh, Pappy, they all come from the same place. Um, Weller 12 and Van Winkle Reserve 12 oh, year yeah. um, is the same thing. It is literally the same thing. It is just aged in a different warehouse, basically. Okay. Yep. Um, with a different barrel char. But it is the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> yep. And I actually prefer Weller 12 to um, Van Winkle 12 year. Um, you can taste the difference in the two? Yeah. Okay. I, I can taste the difference in just about everything. Well, yeah, you're a pro. I'm a pro. You got a refined. Um, yeah. If if you ever want to taste the difference between thing, and I know a lot of a lot of people don't get this opportunity, but you, like when we're choosing single barrel bourbons and we're choosing barrel picks for the store, and I've got six samples of the same exact bourbon in front of me, but they come from different parts of the warehouse or different warehouses in general. Some of them are night and day. Some of them are terrible. Yeah. Some of them are really good, but it's the same thing. What do you like? Like, what is, is it a sweetness? Is it a spiciness? Like, what is it that would make you choose one of the same over another? When I'm choosing a barrel, all I have in the back of my mind is what the general public would like. Okay. Um, And what the general public likes for the most part, from what I think, and and my dad's totally different when it comes to this. Um, My dad chooses what he likes and what he likes is not what everybody likes. He's, Mm -hmm. He, he he doesn't put himself into like the common man's shoes. Right. Um, we're snobby. He's snobby. Um, but not everybody's like that. So so what I'm looking for is something that's easy to drink. Generally, I'm also looking for something that's higher proof. Which people say, oh, it's higher proof. It can't be easy to drink. No, that's, that's total bullshit. Yeah. Um, it, it's it, it all. It, there's so many factors that go into bourbon. Bourbon, the juice itself is nothing for bourbon, if, if you follow what I'm saying. The yeah. actual juice that goes into to the barrel has little to or nothing to do with how it's going to eventually taste. It all has to do with the age, the climate, where it's positioned in the rack house. Because if you've ever been in a rack house. There's sweet have, spots, basically. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and there are certain distilleries with certain sweet spots at certain rack houses. Like if you go to Jim Beam. They got rack houses spread out all over the place. Uh, there's, I don't know how many they have. They have hundreds of thousands of barrels aging at one time. And all the rack houses are split up. 
different places. And the, and the way Jim Bean does it is actually pretty cool. We're real tight with the Jim Bean people. Mm-hmm. And the way that their rack houses, rick houses, rack houses are spread out on property, they're just random because if there's a natural disaster, they don't want them all to get swept out at one time. So yeah. they're not lined up in this perfect line of building of warehouses. They're spread out all over the property for that reason, which I think is genius. Yes, absolutely. So take us to, all right, give us some of the distilleries that you've visited. You know, um, I haven't been to a whole lot of different distilleries. When we go to Kentucky, it's usually on Suntory's dime, which Suntory owns. Uh, Jim Beam, uh, uh, Suntory's Japanese, and their whiskeys would that, that you would know are Yamazaki, Hibiki. Yes. Okay. Um, yep. But they've. So, I, I like Japanese whiskeys. A yes. Good bit. I actually got asked that question today on Matt's show. Um, and I, the, this is the last thing I said today that Japanese whiskey is if scotch and bourbon had a baby. That's what I've called Japanese whiskey. So. <laughs> Um, no, that's a great analogy. Yeah, that was um, one of the questions I was going to ask was like, what's the height? Because it's a little on Japanese s- smokier. I don't know. Yeah, it's got like- some scotchy qualities that smoky, medicinal, peatiness um, from the peat moss that they smoke off in Scotland. Okay. Um, but it also has that that bite that bourbon has, mm-hmm. um, that caramelliness, the vanilla notes that you get from bourbon. Okay, so that, said, that's a great segue to the question that I wanted to ask you. Go ahead. When people are talking about bourbon and they're, again, I'm the common man, so I'm just getting into this. But when we people are describing bourbon, they got all these crazy words. We talk about peatiness and caramel and vanilla. What are your favorite words? To what is the stupidest the word you've ever heard? Well, I'll tell described. you this: the stupidest word I have heard so far <laughs> reading is chewy mouthfeel. So that bourbon's chewy got mouth kind of a feel. chewiness to it. What does that sure. mean? Sure. And <laughs> what does that mean? Chewy, chewy would be um, tackiness. Tackiness. So, like, because there's chewy and then there's oily and creamy and creamy. Don't pee, (laughs) don't pee back there. I see y'all walking. Don't pee. No, we can't do that. We'll get kicked (laughs) off of YouTube quick. Um. So we were at creamy, creamy, chewy, if you will. It's. it's stu- I mean, It's not stupid, but for a common <laughs> person, it's it's too much. Yeah. There, yes. But, like, if you've tasted enough, I've tasted way too much whiskey in my life. I can tell you when a whiskey is oily, it just coats your mouth, and it sticks to you, and it, it just goes down slow. A tacky, ta- a tacky <laughs> bourbon drinks like a... Like a red, like a big cab, a big meaty cab, red wine, Meaty. and it's just it's kind of in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? It's funny you just said oily because I switched from the rabbit hole, Derringer, the sherry, the sherry finish, to that old Forester 1920, and I thinking about the word oily, I, it, I feel like it's sticking to my tongue a little bit more the, as, as it compares. Well, and, and the reason the rabbit hole probably isn't that way so, so so you're saying the 1920 is is, is more is oily more ta- feeling yeah or, 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 or more oily so that's the that it's finished in sherry yeah, the, sherry the rabbit cast, hole yeah. um and sherry is gonna have that tackiness i mean it's yeah. sherry sherry want fortified wine but it right. is what sherry is so it's gonna have that tackiness it's an after dinner sipper whatever it's so it's got but, a nice oaky af- afterbirth yeah, yeah. Afterbirth. Yes. Is that from um, Anchorman? That's from The Office. <laughs> I shouldn't. Oh my God. It's a Michael Scott line. Somebody's going to kill me because I didn't know that. Because you didn't know The Office reference? Uh, the, oh, the, yeah. the my wife office. will kill me. Shout out my wife. The, the, she will the, kill me for not knowing that Office quote. The, 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 I, I should have known that. The, the, the Scotch and Splenda. Scotch and Splenda. <laughs> that, that, that is my favorite TV show of all time. Yeah. Mine too. It is. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It's good. 100%. Yep. There's the, it's the one where all right, um Jack, uh Cheryl and Jack yeah. Jack will play will uh play Office Roulette where oh. he'll go on uh Netflix and he'll pull up the off well it's not on Netflix anymore. Find one and well play he it. will just he will just close his eyes and like scroll until yep. and then he stops and then whatever episode that's what that's, that's the, the episode that they watch. Sometimes you just want to watch it before you go to bed and just relax. You can't pick. Except if you get to the last season. 
Like yeah, if it lands in the last season, that sucks, bro. Yeah, trash. It's trash. The middle's the best. Yeah, yeah. once yeah, yeah, once Michael leaves, like yeah. it's it's time to like it's, the few the, the couple beginning Will Ferrells. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I bad. get a couple little chuckles. There's there. a few Andy ones too. Yeah, that I'm like. with you. Andy, Andy is uh, it, well, Ed Hel- Ed Helms. Uh, and I just the, the, the character just it just didn't play. It didn't get out. you. No. Yeah. He's quirky. He's just a, that's for sure. He plays the character well, what he's supposed to be, just a kind of an arrogant, uh, like hoity toity, hoity toity, yeah, Ivy League, whatever. <laughs> but it just did not play well with the show. Now, Robert California, oh, uh, James Spader <laughs> is best. unbelievable. I, I think he's unbelievable. The, the, yeah, the scene where he, um, where he actually interviews oh, and he's like God. in their head. And, and like he's oh, basically great, yeah. yeah that's the best that's the best scene <laughs> and the, ever and the cast of, the cast of people they got to do that 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 interview process yes. was pretty good ray romano jim carrey yeah um it, it was pretty uh warren buffett they had warren yeah buffett warren buffett it. joined <laughs> in <laughs> they got uh what's his name from uh the original office uh to zoom in yeah oh, i can't remember his oh name. what's his name you know the british guy mm-hmm. the british uh, guy fantastic with the golden globes ah, god damn it he's funny too Yes, he is good. I can't remember um, his name though. Uh, yeah, we me. can talk about the office for days. Oh, God, I, I could right. talk about the office all, all right. So, all right, here's what you want to talk about. You want to talk about golf, and you want to talk about the office. Yeah. Um. Right, so, I, I'm going to we're our, we're going to take our podcast to a golf tournament in not this not this weekend, but next weekend uh, in Lafayette, um, Casada Pines. Uh, that's probably more like is it mid? I don't even know where that is. Mid. Uh, Lafayette Lake Charles. I don't even know. Yeah, I think it's a little bit past Lafayette. Okay, Sam Bacon's in the chat, so he'll yeah. know. But we're gonna go, and we have to like, uh, we're gonna interview guys on the course. We're gonna be doing some live, like commentating, like his butt. I don't know if he's gonna make it. That's he's so he's gonna choke. <laughs> is is this for the Corn Ferry Tour? No, this is for uh the Basil Invitational. So it's uh college, high school, high school. High school. Yeah, so it's gonna okay. be a lot of high school uh, coaches uh, going, and we're gonna interview some kids. Nice. Um, do like Future. a little high school thing. Yeah, it's gonna be one team. One, they have no idea what they're getting themselves yeah. into with me. <laughs> uh, we may ask them, "Hey, what was your first date like?" Oh man, things like that. You know, <laughs> uh, who are you going to prom with? Uh, you so know, you're really trying to shake them up. What she bit. look like? <laughs> <laughs> I could ask them anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll shake it up. Uh, but I, I'm going on that. That, but I haven't played golf in a bit. My back is killing me. My, well. I got I get injections in my back, so my back's actually pretty good right now. But I can't ever hit the ball like solid. There's no injection, unfortunately, that'll fix that. Uh, it's nope. not solid, but it's like I can hit the ball solid, but I can never get distance. You a slice guy? You a hook guy? Not, I, I've straightened it out now, but it just doesn't go far. What's it's your handicap? Uh, twenty. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, whatever, whatever number you want to give it. I don't know. Okay, limitless. Right. Yes. 20 to, 20 to 30 in that range, you know, I just like to ask <laughs> under a hundred drink a lot on the golf course. Yes. Okay. That's the, yeah. that's the problem. I think is that I want to drink and I want to take, um, my pain medication and all that. And then and I'm, vibe. I'm loosey goosey back nine. <laughs> okay. So, so you get better with drinking. Well, versus... yeah, it's like darts and like okay. billiards no, well, and he, he gets, all that. You get better in your head. So right. you, so you basically, <laughs> you basically, I've, I've got friends like this. Uh, I don't drink on the golf course because I'm way too competitive to drink on the golf course. Okay. Bingo. So, you too? Same. Oh, I don't even want to play people think I'm crazy, but <laughs> so I, so most of my friends play like number one through number eight, and then they'll sit out until like number 14. I mean, they'll hit a couple shots here and there, and then, and then they'll finish around strong and make a birdie on like 16, and the round's over with. And somehow they shot an 82. And you owe them money, and you're like, well, yeah, "What? Yeah. What? What happened just now?" <laughs> they, and they made double on every hole, but they only hit the ball like twice, right, right. out of bounds. Yeah. Oh my god. But most of my friends like that. But I enjoy playing with people like that. I I, I do have friends that I play with that are really really good golfers. Yep. Um, that I enjoy playing with too. But most of the time, I play with golfers that are that are just fun to be around and just my friends. That's basically. what it's about. Not not great and like put you to shame kind of golfers. Like, what's your handicap? I'm a six. Ooh, right single nah, digit screw guy. you, brother. Oh my God. Get out of here. Man. And I've gotten it down That's why to we a gave three. Them the 
but I just don't have enough time to play golf anymore. But I, I play with guys that are plus handicaps wow. sometimes so that have played that were professional golfers. And who who were those guys? Uh, oh, Greg Berthelot. Okay. He went to Catholic High. Yeah. Um, John Peterson at all? I've played with John before. Um, we're going to get John on. Um, we're uh, with Bogies being the sponsor. Bogies is big with John Peterson. So we'll get John on. Awesome. Um, we're going to be live at Bogies. I don't know if we won't even say that next week. Maybe so. You want to try to do that? I'm in. Live at Bogies. Um, uh, if we can remember our time at Bogies, that'll be the first member yeah, of being at Bogies. <laughs> Yeah, like walking in and leaving at bogeys. I haven't been to bogeys in a long time. Man, everybody's got a bogey story, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What's your fortunately? What's your worst bogey story? Jeez, oh, I'm no, not saying that on. <laughs> we cannot go there. <laughs> shit. Oh no. We, I, I've done some stupid shit in and around LSU and Tigerland. <laughs> oh, that's a fact. Stupid. I, I don't. I, I will tell one story. <laughs> LSU was. <laughs> I was probably too old for this shit too. But LSU like last year. No, this was probably twelve. When, when, when did Tre'Davious White play? Uh, twenty fifteen, something like that. Yeah, about like 2013, 14 maybe. Okay, so that was. I was too old for this. Oh no, no, no you're right. Fifteen, yeah. So I'm thirty two oh, yeah. now. So that ooh, I was in my mid twenties. So this was after college days and everything and there's this, no business for you being in tiger no i wasn't even in tiger land i was in the new taco bell next to tiger land <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm talking about the taco bell right yes there, i know next to mellow about. mushroom yep. and, this yeah. and all that so this was actually i was way too old to be acting like this but tredavious white was in the taco bell this was the mcneese game when he played there and it rained like i've never oh, seen it rain yeah. before I don't know if y'all remember was that, that the one game. that was delayed, yes. delayed a bunch, and then they finally just said, "We're not, we're, we're not we're doing just, it." Yeah, done. we said like, McNeese. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The McNeese yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. The McNeese. Yeah, yeah. I, me and Summer went. All right, I, I was there. <laughs> here's the problem. Uh, Summer, my wife, will never go to an LSU game because, because of that one. No, no, no. Well, first it was more like you know, uh, I gotta. I mean, it's gonna be all day. We're gonna be tailgating. I'm gonna be sweating. Sounds like my mom. I gotta like, I gotta like, <laughs> be all done up and everything because everybody else is done up and all that and like. And so I finally got her to a game, and I get her out to that one. That and I go with my friend Brandon's in the chat. So I go with Brandon and his wife, and we go, and all of a sudden it's rained out, and we're walking back, and it's a storm uh, that we've never seen before. And she it, will never go dude, back to it, it unless rained, it's the sweets. It rained so much. I, I, I remember fleeing the stadium. I was fleeing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I was, so, I was very drunk, fleeing the game soaking wet and it started raining so hard i, I could not even walk in the it rain was bad I, I went and hit, got under one of the oak trees next to the stadium <laughs> and I was huddled under the branch just trying to stay warm i was just trying to survive at that point and i think everybody was but anyway we we, we ended up at the taco bell uh which is always an awful decision and tredavious white and his little brother were there and um i was like oh it's tredavious white and i was drunk and I said something to him, and his little brother, who was bigger than him, because Tredavious is not a very big guy. His little brother's in high school. I think he was actually a big time football recruit too. I can't remember his name. Devin he, White. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I thought about that, like when Devin White signed, I'm like, is this that? Guy? Wait, is that the guy? Is that the that dude got that almost kicked my, my ass in the Taco that, Bell? <laughs> I said something to Tredavious, and he thought I was being an ass, and. His brother got in my face. We almost got into it in, 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 inside Taco Bell, and I'm waiting on food. Um, but that, that that's one of my Tigerland drunk stories. <laughs> oh, that wasn't that bad. No, nah, it wasn't that bad. I thought it was going to be really I've worse. I've got f- far, far worse stories that I can't. Yeah. Like, I was always the guy. So I was I was the little guy. Well, not little, but like I, I remember going to Tigerland with a friend of mine, Kevin Jones, and he played it. He played it uh, in high school. Jones's with me. brother? No, I wish it was. Kevin the Realtor. Kevin the Realtor, Kevin the Realtor Jones. Yes. Mike Mike Havilland's in the background saying, hey, my, you're a realtor, realtor guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Mike Havilland, realtor, uh, shout out right here. You got a little uh, ad plug work here. Yeah, so, um, all right. My, um, Realtors are all about self-promotion. Yeah, they are. Times. Oh, my God. Hey, well, you want to you wanna come step out in front of the camera Dare we say again? shameless yeah, self-promotion? Yeah. Let's uh, go. So, Kevin Jones was with me. Kevin Jones is, Kevin Jones is huge, right? Oh, yeah. So I went to high school with him. I grew up with Kevin. Um, 
Kevin, uh, we I decided to take him to t- Tigerland. We go out to uh, we go to the Tiger Bar and we go to Fred's. And um, I was single, and he knew I was single. And what Kevin would do, Kevin's a, like he's six six, uh, two fifty, just full of muscle. And Kevin was like grabbing girls and just saying he would like to date you. He would like to. He and would that like went to, over swimmingly. Yes, and uh, yeah. he, it didn't matter. Uh, Fred's mostly. Uh, we we kind of skipped around Tigerland that day. Shout out bogeys. Yeah, bogeys. <laughs> we may have gone to bogeys. I don't remember. <laughs> you never remember going to bogeys. No. Yeah, like bogeys is like the last one you just don't even remember walking. <laughs> in. I walk. I walked in there the other day and I went into the patio. And I was like, how long has this patio been here? And he's like, oh, it's been here for Ten forever. Years. You've never and been I go, on the patio? I, if I have, I just don't remember. It truly was his last stop of the night. Because it, he never it, even I don't remember the, the patio. They have the wraparound yeah. benches outside. Dude, yep. this is the first time. It was a couple of days ago. This is the first time I've ever been on bo- in bogeys dr- sober. I've yeah. never been in bogeys sober before. It's weird life. going into because <laughs> I've, I've gone into places because of my job in the middle of the day and it's weird yeah, it going right. into some of these places in the middle of the day like what the hell yeah this is what it looks like no. yeah and i'm like oh, i just don't remember it like this no. uh, i remember it uh like i i was at i was standing on the uh stage and apparently that was where gronk like was uh like twerking on the stage at bogey's <laughs> like it's weird it's just I, I don't notice it Without a million I can't people, you've never been on the patio though. That's I probably have. I just don't remember. Yeah. I, that was the thing. I was like, I walked out there. And I was like, I just don't remember any of this. And I, I, I think that's the that's the that's the case. But we would go out, and he was trying to set me up with girls, and it didn't matter if they had boyfriends or not. Mm-hmm. And he would grab the girl, and he would say he would just like push them towards me, and that turned into a big fight. I don't. But believe thankfully, you. what that. You don't believe that? I'm joking. A big fight. Yeah, but that 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 you 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 thankfully go to Tigerland, Bogies, any of them. Uh, And and I don't know how it is now with cell phones and everything and people taking videos. But when I was in college, and I'm 32 now, but when I was in college, there was all out brawls every single. Oh, for sure. It did not matter the day of the week. There was going to be a brawl somewhere there, was bra- there were brawls without beef it was just brawls yeah. just like it had yeah. to happen yeah we're, just, the end of the we're night. just drinking and yeah. we, we got to fight somebody yeah. kevin kevin place. was just was so much bigger and than everybody and was just like thank god he's with me right yeah. now but i had to bring him out and then he slept that off in my house like <laughs> yeah it was bad i've got ptsd from some some of those places just from some of the things that i've seen yep at those places guys getting rammed into doors like uh, like oh. hogs like and brick walls did y'all see the video of the oklahoma wide receiver that got oh yeah picked the fight with the mma guy i mean lord have yeah. mercy in the bathroom in the bathroom those, those people just trying to relieve themselves at the urinals and there was plenty of urine all over the floor too <laughs> and was, i can't uh, imagine getting uh, my bar-tar, face knocked out bar tar and vomit all over the floor Floors. oh and pp or whatever else was on the floor yep. and guys just innocently trying to just pee at the bar <laughs> when it was stone cold into. savage though that video the, the 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 two guys that were mmas they're they're talking oh. back and forth and you said his friend and says, which is already bleeding from his nose. And he says, which one do you want? Yeah. And I'm like, I cannot think of something bro. more savage and look at your best run. friend I, I, and being like, bro, which one do you want? Let's go. And then they both absolutely took them down. Anybody standing there that, that, that heard that and saw that should have been like, okay, out. this is a terrible <laughs> idea. Cause they're deciding who they want to go after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, this that, isn't good. That would have been my cue to just be like, yeah. all right, guys, we messed up here. We gotta I, go. we're, we're bigger guys, but <laughs> I got to get out of here. But it was kind of beautiful, though, because you got the big jock dudes that are like, just like, you could see their neck veins bulging. And within 15 seconds, they're both licking up the floor. It doesn't matter how, it it doesn't matter how big you are. Nope. If you've got, if you're, if you're going to get somebody who has experience like that, you're going to get taken down every time. (laughs) And, and, and they did. And it was was Uh, incredible. Dude, and they just wailed. Wailed. It was ugly. I think the video ends to, too short i I, oh yeah i wanted to see see the dudes come up and be like what just happened yeah 
I don't think they came up. I had to take a shower after I watched that video. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was They rough. were just rolling around in that shit on the floor. I don't, God knows what was on that they floor. They just smelled like piss and like, <laughs> oh, no. Jail and it's like, that night. all right, now this guy, everybody knows who this guy is, right? Right. He, uh, he, I cannot imagine the shit. That he was a holder on the, he was a holder. Field. He was, or I guess he was a he, reserve one, wide, one, one, one wide receiver. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was a backup quarterback. Or I think it was a backup receiver. receiver. You might be, yeah, you I might saw be right. Receiver, yeah. He transferred Slash from Liber- Liberty to. Oh, you got uh, the scoop. Yeah, he, he transferred. <laughs> oh, yeah. One team, one podcast. Bro. He doxed the guy already. Uh, yeah, yeah. But well, Liberty to Oklahoma. So Liberty, good Christian school, good Christian boy. Um, not a good fighter. Sure. Yeah, not a good fighter. <laughs> uh, knows how to talk shit, but that's but about he, it. He, he's a holder. He's he holds. That's that was what his position was listed on most of the tweets that I saw. The holder for the Oklahoma football team, you know, he's like, oh, I play football in Oklahoma, but he failed to mention that he was the holder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, I guess it's a big deal to make the Oklahoma football. Whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind making that holder money in the NFL. Right. Come on now. But oh I, yeah. But, but I, I, I don't think that I don't think you make the NFL being a holder. I don't think you you're sure. a holder. You're you just like a else. backup yeah, like punter. hunter or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doesn't Thomas Armstead hold? The I think he does. Yeah. Um. I, I think like what long, you want to do. Yeah. You, long snappers. Yeah. Be the way you want to be a snapper. Yeah. Um. Shout yeah, out. That's about it. Shout out the uh, Blake the Fer- Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson. Ferguson. Brothers, Ferguson. Uh. Bogies. Shout out Bogies. Um. We're gonna get. We might be able to get Blake Ferguson. Man, that'd be great. I mean that um, those dudes are living the life. I mean you have got it. K- KJ Malone, you know KJ, right? I met KJ um like a month or two ago actually. Yeah, we've had KJ on the podcast on one team one podcast and then Carl Malone made a guest appearance and a Zoom call which yes, was indeed. fantastic. Um So uh, Carl was Carl, uh, Carl has a rum. Yes. Um Elion or e- Elion. Elion, I forget. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't remember the. I told him I was a bourbon guy. He, I, I wanted him to come down. We'll, we'll do like a cigar night. We'll do it at Bogies because apparently I talked to Clayton at Bogies. He has uh, KJ comes there and he sells him cigars mm-hmm. and he'll sell him uh, his rum. And whenever he bought it, um, he got a knock on the door and he opened it and it was Carl Malone actually delivered delivering the That's rum. Awesome. So, so yeah, so the they, mailman, they uh, <laughs> delivered, they, they have a uh, distributorship out in Ruston. I've, yeah. Uh, Carl's from that area. Yeah. Let's have uh, Homer. I think he's from Homer. He's from North of Ruston, which is almost Arkansas. And actually my in-laws have a family farm that's in Homer. It's five miles from El Dorado, Arkansas anyway. So, but they own a distributorship called PF Imports. We just started yes. working with them. Yeah, and they actually carry a bourbon uh, from a guy in New Jersey, Mike. His name is Mike. I can't remember his last name, but it's Penelope Bourbon. Mm-hmm. It's really good is stuff it? too. Okay, yeah. I I want to get. I, so that was another one I was trying to get was uh, PF Importers to kind of be a a partner with this. So I'll reach out to KJ about that. Yeah, and and Carl's got um the cigars and he's yeah, a big cigar guy. But I've I, had a few of them. I just ran out of my last one. I smoked my last one the other day. Um, but that was the Joe Burrow cigar. Yes, indeed. So it he was. was actually oh. delivered all those cigars to the LG they. Team. They made their way to the field. I'm sure uh, KJ had something to do with that. I'm sure. Yep. Um, <laughs> but 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 I met KJ two months ago. They came presented to us. Um, their new distributorship, Dad's Rum, cigars, and, and KJ was a super super nice guy. Yes. Super nice guy. He's so good. Um, yeah, we'll have him a part of this too because I would love to have him. How's the rum? The rum's good. Stay I've safe. heard it's very good. It's, I haven't um, had it yet. Uh, I saw it at Calandro's the last time yeah. I was there. And, it, and we actually, right now, we have boxes that it comes in uh, that are signed by him. Oh, nice. Oh, so, that's I'll a pretty I'll cool pick, grab. I'll, pick, yeah. I'll come and pick that up. Yeah, that's for like sure. A nice yeah, we, grab. We, we got like five cases. So, what I, is the rum? Is it a light rum? Is it a dark rum? It's, it's an aged dark. rum. Yeah. Um, I think it's from the Dominican Republic. Yes, okay. that's correct. Um, and man, I loved aged rum. Aged rum is my jam. That's 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 what I drink when I'm at home. Usually, is aged rum. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Diplomatico Four Square. Um. Yeah, that's. that's I need jam. to start getting into that more because I've noticed that I I like the sweeter bourbons anyway. So I need to start getting into that. I think that would probably be my next step. I right? should have brought a bottle of like four square here instead of whiskey. We can do a rum spinoff. I mean, that's easy. Yeah. Well, Durante <laughs> Jones Rum Club. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 <laughs> what rum, does he care? Uh, age rum is like the Jake it's Pete's got rum bourbon club. qualities, but it's it's sweet. It's sweet. And that's why I like it. <laughs> Jake Pete's Rum Club. Uh, yeah, we'll have to do a spinoff on Jake Pete's. Um, all right. Let's talk about LSU. 
Um, I know you. I, I know you want to talk about LSU a little bit, Taylor. Um, tell me about what you thought about this last year for football, um, and kind of where where are you thinking we're going to go for this year? Man, this last year weird. was weird. Yep, very mm-hmm. weird. And the, the Pelicans. I, I went to. The, I told you I went to the Pelicans game on Sunday. Yep. And I think that was my first sporting event I've been to since all of this started. I can't think of another sporting event that I've been to. You didn't go to a game last Did year. Did not go to an LSU. I didn't. I didn't game. either. Me neither. I didn't either. And I've didn't been go. like consistently I because it's... I mean my my in laws are huge tailgaters. Yep. They have a huge tailgate under the PMAC, uh-huh. and we do tailgating. Why the hell would we go to football games if you can't tailgate? Exactly. I know. What's the point? Well, and and the atmosphere of Tiger Stadium is unlike anything else. But no, if you got whatever it was, ten thousand fans, it's it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, it doesn't feel. And, the and, same. and 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 the reason I talk about the Pelicans game I went to Sunday, it just was not the same. No, I I wasn't crammed in a seat. I I had which was nice. I had the me and my buddy had the whole row to ourselves. Um, but still, it just did not feel like a sporting event. I mean. I'm not going to get into the politics of having mask on and all that bullshit, but it just doesn't feel right. I've heard me. baseball this year, LSU baseball, feels a little no, more normal because is it early season though? Because yeah, it's because it's house. it's 25 percent capacity, yeah. so you have 25 uh, people there, um, and it feels like a normal midweek kind of uh, crowd anyway. Um, so that's why it probably feels a little. A little yeah. normal, yeah, but baseball they don't <clears throat> ever really pack. I mean, they do pack the house for big SEC for a big, series. a big right. weekend series yeah. on Friday night. Right. They would, right. but and they do, but it's still not. It's still yeah. not the same as football. I agree. Oh, yeah. yeah, football's weird. Um, well, and, and and what it looks like, I saw a tweet today that um, LSU sent a, a message out to students talking about it being normal for the fall. So it looks like classes are going to start being more normal for the fall. Yeah. And so I'm thinking we're, we may be approaching some more normalcy when it comes to capacity, hopefully in the next couple months and we can get back to what we're doing, you know? Yep. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I saw something today about Texas A&M led the, like the nation in attendance. So yeah. Texas apparently is, yeah. The, the restrictions are a lot less in Texas than what they were. It here wasn't in every- Florida? No, Texas no. A&M was yeah. like. It was um, after the Texas A&M Florida game when Dan Mullen started kind of. He was yapping off a about it. Bit about how many fans were. He in was College pissed. Nation. He was pissed because Florida uh, regulations were a lot less than what Texas A&M yeah. was. Texas, Texas apparently was able to like do whatever they wanted. Well, and yeah. in, in A&M, you got to remember all the cadets too. Yep. So they're probably some kind of deal with Loophole. the cadets. Yeah. That- I, I saw an army game, same thing. It was mm-hmm. like early in the season where everybody was seemed like they were all together. Yeah. Um, they were all around each other. And they maybe it was because of their testing protocols probably were still stringent yeah. enough to where they were allowed to do that. Yep. I, I don't really know the rules. I'm sure there that. was some loophole but, there. Yeah, there was something with that that was just kind of like out of normal where it was like yeah. Texas A&M all of a sudden – like that Florida game, they had, they uh-huh. hold probably a hundred grand. I mean, hundred thousand people in that stadium. They probably had seventy five. It was wild. I remember watching on TV because that was, was like, like kind of in the midst of or in the beginning of this. Like, how weirdness. does that happen? I was like, this is just doesn't look right. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And as much yeah. as I, I uh, Dan Mullen's comments can get under my skin, I was like, I kind of see where he's he's a little pissed on that. Yeah, I but I don't, I don't even, I don't know how he can be pissed because Florida is pretty wide open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rob Rob Santos, the government, the governor over there, he's he's got yeah. that place. Oh yeah, open. Oh, my, yeah. uh, my sister went to Miami a couple weeks ago, and she said it it was wild. It was rocking. Yeah, I've heard the same thing. So yeah, uh, and, and and but Dan Mullen just bitches about everything as it is. That guy, yeah, I um I have some feelings about him. I I, I just can't. <sighs> can't Nothing Dan Mullen. Than yeah, that. he's the, kind of a prick, bro. The, the, no, he's a prick, but it's like the comments, the post game. He's a he's blamer. A crier. He's a crier. He's a crier yeah. like Jimbo. Um. Between the two of them, I, yeah. I don't know who I hate more. I, I, I hate both of them way more than Nick Saban. Right. But, sure. Nick, Nick Saban has just made my personal life miserable for the last yep. 
don't yeah. know how many years. I'm just used to disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've come to accept it though. We've come yeah. to accept but he, it. But, you know? but but Nick's not an ass, right? When it comes right. to winning, right? He just wants to win. Period. In a discussion, yep. he's not going to rub it in your face. Yep. He, he's just better. He's yep. just better. What and he, he said, always, if you want people to like you, sell ice cream. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's I get it. I totally get it. But now it's also come to the point where people are like, oh, you know, Bama's in the championship game again. You know, who do you want to win? You want Bama again? I I, I can deal with the Saban legacy. I can deal with the dynasty. I can deal with the greatness now way more than I want to deal with anybody else, especially like in Ohio, in Ohio State. Yeah, but yes. you know? I think there's light at the end of the tunnel with Nick Saban. For sure. Uh, he's getting older. For sure. Everybody gets older. Yep. And – my only fear is if Dabo decides that he's okay, yeah. I'm going to take the reins. Well, that was my next question was, do you think there'll be continuity at Alabama post Saban? Like, does that legacy other than the <sighs> recruiting? Cause we, we understand that he's going to so have powerhouse recruiting. The, the, the rumor has always been that when Saban leaves Dabo Sweeney's right. taking the job, which is a scary thought. And but Dabo played football there. He did. Right? I, but and most but, people don't know that or realize that. Right. But, but is Clemson built up enough and that he knows that he's in the ACC? Will he even leave that? Like, True. I, I think it's, I think that's a better job. Look at for, the schedule for Dabo yeah. to stay at Clemson. He can make the same money and yep. then he can automatically be basically be in the playoffs every year with a good yeah. team. Yeah. And right. he he's got it built up. Why, why would he yeah. leave and come to the SEC West? What, what in my opinion, what Saban does makes look easy just coasting through the sec every year yeah is not easy no I agree. absolutely he totally just agree. makes it look very easy he's got a system in place to where he it, it's no holds barred he knows exactly what he's going to do and um he skirts that recruiting system so well I, I have people texting me all the time like i'm in the know or something but people are texting me all the time asking me yeah how is it how is alabama able to sign 27 kids this year when the limit was supposed to be 25 <coughs> excuse me and the year before they they signed more than 25 right because <coughs> typically it's like you sign less than 25 you can make it up the next year exactly but if it's year after year it's because he's like gray shirting guys he's there's something called blue shirting now there's all these yeah. weird things that he's able to skirt it and he's able to take anybody he wants he, at this point. He knows what he's doing. The the, the the thing, the observation I make about Saban that I think sets him apart from every – this is just my opinion too – that sets him apart from every other coach in the country is he can sit in a five-stars living room and tell them they're going to sit yep. the yeah. first year or the first two years, <clears throat> and, and they will still come. come. you damn right. Yeah, and in every recruiting class, they will win a national championship. And, and yeah. they have since he's gotten there – Every single person that he has recruited has won a national championship. Yep. Well, I'm that sure y'all saw that uh, that leaked Zoom interview with the guy with, with him talking to the recruits. It was an incredible. Pitch. How could you tell him that? Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, it, 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 there's so much confidence that guy exudes confidence in terms of what his plan is and what his plan for you is. And like you said, it, it's incredible that he can get these five star athletes to come in and say, "Okay, you're I'll, not I'll playing. Sit. You're right. You're right." And then before you know it, by the eighth game of the season the guy who thought that they were sitting and is a five-star athlete proved himself and just like um Devontae smith is catching a touchdown pass in the national championship who is by the way an amy boy exactly yep, absolutely exactly he's he's got a knack for stealing our people too yeah you ain't lying. yeah he's got a connection with the barber over there yeah. yep. uh, i was trying to get the barber on our podcast actually. i was in amy city louisiana today actually <laughs> yeah. I, I, right I, by the barbershop. I was telling my <laughs> wife about the barbershop like two months ago because i knew about the barbershop because actually Devonte smith's is weird Devonte smith's Vincent uncle Sanders. yeah um his uncle was our coca-cola merchandiser for a long time okay well um, brandon stewart if you're in the chat you'll know that um brandon stewart works at coca-cola so yeah uh, i can't remember his name uh rj dj anyway he played at uab Good, good guy. But he told me about the barber shop like two years ago. Yep. Um, and I told my wife about the barber shop. I said, "There's a barber shop in a meet, and the barber has real tight connections with <laughs> Alabama." Yep. And then this article came out like a month ago, or on ESPN about the barber shop. I was like, "That's the barber <laughs> shop." Yep. I, I told you it was a barber shop, and I knew it wasn't bullshit. There's a barber shop, and that's the barber shop. Um, George Sanders. Uh, worked at Lamar with me when I was at Lamar for okay. that brief time. Yeah. Uh, George's brother is Vincent Sanders. Okay. Uh, the barber. Okay. 
So I, there is a way in that I can get to the barber, and we'll, maybe we can have the barber in our backyard. We can Ooh. talk to him. And um, I mean, a meat is not this hot. No, yeah, no. it's not the hot. There's day, Ken, but... it's Kentwood and a meat basically. Yeah, it, There's yeah. just two two schools. Right. I mean, Devontae Smith from a meat. Yeah, we lost Devontae Smith, but it's not like a meat in the surrounding areas pumping out these yeah. huge athletes and all that stuff. Devontae Smith just happens. To is be. it just me or or when I look at Devontae Smith and I know what he did in college, we all saw it. Yeah. I don't know how that translates to the NFL with how small he is. He's just, like, I mean, how is a safety not going to eat that guy's lunch? I, I, you know, what I always wanted to see was somebody really be able to jam up at the line. And I think that that was his skill was able to get off the line. Yeah. Clean. Free release and go. Yeah. Yeah. And once he gets clean like that, uh, he's such a smooth route runner. And he's yeah. so fast off the yep. line. I think that's where his uh, knack is. Uh, I think he's not a guy that you're going to, you're going to ask to go across the middle. Right. Yeah, uh, he's he's going to get blown up by defense. somebody. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I, I just don't think that's his game at all. Yeah. I think he's going to be more some fly routes and, mm. and a speed guy on the outside. But yeah. If, and y'all wait, know way more about this stuff than me. But no, it, it, I'm the, we're the common we're man. We're the common man. We, I've said common man a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. the common man. Uh, I'm really into football, but the scheme that they run in Alabama, too, has to have something to do with how wide open. I mean, Without the, a doubt. The, the, the game plan that Sarkeesian had for the national championship was incredible I and agree. the SEC championship I agree. and the playoff games. It's just everything that they do is very inventive. And it's crazy to see Saban to adapt to run an offense like that. Yeah, he absolutely. Has, yep. Um, Cause he's always been That's credit to him. I mean, he, he was the defensive guy and yeah, he was running, running, through, running. Yeah, and they turn and, and burn through coordinators and they don't miss a beat. And, yep. and, and that's, that, that's the legacy right there. I mean, and uh, uh, LSU had the, the the season two years ago or whatever, and they talk about losing all these assistants and ball and doing it, and we we had to do all this, but Saban does it every single year. Yep, I know every year, and he reloads and he does it successfully. And I just don't think there's anybody else, Dabo included, that can do that. Yep. I just don't think it's possible. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Yep. Uh, a lot of people are, are getting into this a little bit now. With the we we're talking about recruiting a little yeah. bit, where we've we've recruited uh, Mason Smith and Sage Ryan now. So it feels like LSU is starting to lock up Louisiana a little bit more with Coach O. Um, I I think those coordinator hires um, they came a little late. Yeah, uh, we can talk about Durante Jones a little we, bit. We with had that, a little but, stress with the coordinator hires. Yeah, like Jake Peets was a home run, bro. Um, his press conference was, I think, the best I've ever seen. Out of a coordinator ever, I we broke that news. You know that we broke the Jake Hashtag Pete's we news. Break news. Yes, we break news. Hashtag <laughs> we break news. Uh, we got a text from somebody that I'm not going to name, uh, who's very well in the know. And when he texts me, I'm like, bro, I'm I, this is it. I'm, I'm texting this. It. <laughs> uh, it, it was Jake Pete's and DJ Mangus are coming, yeah. and we're going to run that that uh, Joe Brady offense. Joe Brady recommended it, and I tweeted it yeah. out. And but when you start watching Jake Pete's like interviews and things like that it's like how can you not get excited about this yeah. guy and it's like that lack of detail that you felt like in you had in 2020 is now gone like right. it is back to where we were in 2019 where the, the i think it was what they call it the number of 10 000 catches where yeah. we were, all of a sudden we see wide receivers dropping balls in 2020 yeah. and you're like well, i'm not used to this at all yeah, yeah. uh now we 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 have this attention to detail that we mm -hmm. didn't have before. We have an NFL offensive coordinator basically as our offensive coordinator now. Durante Jones coming in, um, very young, aggressive, uh, defensive mind. I mean, obviously, hungry. defensive mind. Yeah, very hungry. Yeah, um, that that's the difference. I feel like an Aranda seen, style, an Aranda yeah, style. I, the I, way I, he approaches kids, you know. I feel like the youngness of our coordinators, and and I heard T Bob talking about it on OTB the other day about how we've got this group of coordinators is are their early risers. They're like first in, they're showing up at five o'clock in the morning. Yep. They're watching film. And like I, that has me just juiced in general, because like you said, that attention to detail is back that I felt like was missing. I felt like we glazed through last season. Um, and well, I, I want that energy back. I want the young hungry guys that are ready to prove it. I, and, How's and that I, cock taste, Mike? Uh, and, and I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pelini was an awful hire. That's just my opinion, but I think Pelini was an awful, it was awful a lazy hire. hire. I think at the time I thought it was a good hire, and, and I didn't know really? I didn't know enough into it. 
I thought um, it was lazy. It felt like the name that was safe. I didn't think we'd get any. I, didn't I think thought we'd go five and five. I was going from but, like, all right, do so you had uh, Dave Aranda? One of the one of the uh, parts about Dave Aranda that we didn't like was that he wasn't aggressive enough. Right. Um, that he he didn't blitz enough. He didn't you know he'd bring the house a lot of times. Probably weren't allowing six hundred yards a game. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was gonna happen. <laughs> Well, I mean, right, right when the Mississippi State game happened, mm-hmm. I was like, "Red alert! Red alert! This well, is not good." And, and I don't even think it was, but it, it was the actual defensive game plan. It felt like the players did not want to play for him. Well, that that and a lot yeah, of well, miscommunication. That, a it, lot of, I mean, we, our guys were looking left and right, looking like this. I mean, it, I think there was a of lot of problems this year, along with KJ Costello was a Heisman Trophy candidate after that first game. Yeah, absolutely yeah, was. was. Uh, we had, we had. Uh, we had a uh, Preston guy on our podcast um, and shout out Preston. He's a good friend of mine, but he basically said, yeah, KJ Costello would be all sec. Uh, and then later on, we, I would replay that same clip over and over and, <laughs> and you know, obviously it didn't happen, but we made him look really, really oh, good. Oh my, we God. made a lot of guys. We I, made, I, uh, I, I was just, I call in... him bedazzled sack. Uh, but, uh, basil I think is his real name. Oh yeah. yeah. But dazzled sack. I like that better. Yeah. But, um, we made him like look like a Heisman candidate for yeah. for uh, Missouri. Uh, same thing. It's a weird um, year. It was. I mean, it was terrible. But it was like I, I saw a uh, clip of Kylan uh, Hill yeah. for a Mississippi State. It was a NFL draft uh, clip of him, and I was trying to show him how how good he was uh, coming out of the backfield. And they showed a clip of him against LSU. <clears throat> he runs a wheel route, and you, you basically had Eli Ricks and you had Jacoby Stevens, both great guys, great. Athletes. Athletes. Yeah. They know what they're doing, right? <clears throat> they both just like turn around. They had no idea what was going on. They had no idea how to cover this real wheel route. They had no idea how to like communicate who was going to take who. Yeah. Uh wide open. Yeah. And it's like, why are you showing this yep. one? Like this isn't a this isn't going to show him his, you know, his ability. This is showing yeah. LSU's lack of it was just a super weird year. It yeah. was just a super weird year. It ne- it never felt right. Oh, Nothing felt right. Um, and hopefully, uh, they write the ship this year. Uh, I think they will. And and I, to me, something that really threw me off last year was aside from the obvious schematic issues that we had with some coaching decisions, we have athletes. Like we had some dogs on defense. Oh yeah. And so the defense was supposed to be incredible. I know. Going and, into the and season, that's what blew that's my right. mind. Was was. Aside from it wasn't expected, it wasn't expected at but all. You know, how there's so many times where the pure athleticism of these dudes can can kind of uh, make up for a lack of scheme, where they can say, "Okay, screw it," you know, I'm man on man, whatever. We never saw that. We 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 always saw them getting in a hot water. We saw them out of position. We saw them not communicating, and it was weird to not see their athleticism shine through. Some of the weird schematic issues that we it, saw. It, it, yeah, but, but I think it just felt like they didn't. They, they they weren't there. They just I agree. they weren't there. I agree. And and I don't know what the issue was. And I and I hope it was Pelini just because he's gone. Yeah. I hope I hope that was the answer to to what the problem is. It yeah. seemed like there was a culture issue in the locker room, and I heard that from people that there was an issue and just issues in the locker room. Yep. Yeah, that sounds like uh, from what I had heard is that when we were making the the defensive coordinator hire, we were looking for a minority hire. Yeah. And it made sense obviously whatever all the stuff that was going on during the year, Bo Pelini, Bill Bush, there were some problems there. Yeah. They were looking at Marcus Freeman. Marcus mm-hmm. Freeman was the hot name. Uh they were trying to get him in. They thought they had him and it did it fell through. He wanted he's He's got what that six felt kids. like a home run, but you know what? I, Tom Herman felt like a home run too. Sure, it did. And it ended up not yeah, being. Big. It did. So I, yeah. that that's been my comparison. I was distraught about losing Freeman. I was like, man, this this really felt like a good fit. But you know what? Um, we could be in a bad place if we had hard. You ain't Herman. lying, man. We could you be in lying. a real bad place. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, it's a it's a disaster. Over I there think about a, I think a little bit of that with uh, all right. So. You, the Herman thing, uh-huh. uh, Jimbo Fisher. I didn't uh, love Jimbo at all. You yep. didn't? No. Oh, at the time I did. Uh-uh. Um, I, well, we were we were we were dying for offensive prowess at that point. Yeah, and he's and, the offensive mind. So let's let's go. You but know? you look at A and M. That's yeah. not like I know. Uh, wide open. You know. I, know. I, I think I think what um, I was I was just surprised of 2020 and his hires that he made because like he 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 saw the formula Ogeron did yeah. in 2019. 
the formula was Joe Brady and you had Dave Aranda. Yeah. You had Dave Aranda, who was, I mean, it, our defense was good, but it wasn't like great. Yeah, but, they were but it was good enough. They were consistent. Yeah, and they made they, some yeah. stops where they needed to make stops, and yeah. they, they, they had just, athletes. They, they, they kept the offense in the game. Right. right. That's all they needed to do. In the back half of the season, they played well. The defense started playing better. Um, but in the beginning of the season, it was just a track meet every game. Yep. And and uh, luckily, we had the uh, – obviously, we had the offense to do it. Uh, so, Helmers is into pitch, and this is serious now. So – uh, we do have a uh, we had, we do have somebody. Wait, that's you. You're trying to join in, right? No, so I thought I, I thought somebody was trying to join in the oh, uh, the chat. I was trying to check the uh, the baseball score. No, you're good. Um, so we uh, let's see. I have Helmers into pitch. <clears throat> Sam Bacon is saying the Bourbon rant of the night. He was he wants to come in and give a rant. And I'm not sure if he's going to be. What's the rant? To, I'm not sure. I, I want to let us rant. I told him. I said, Do you want the link? Uh, I'll give him the link, and if he wants to come in and give us a bur- bourbon rant of yeah, the night, I'm not go. sure. I think it might be uh, podcast beef. Oh. Sounds like it could be podcast beef. I don't really know, but uh, we're we're. Uh, I'll see. I didn't do anything. Just so you know, I didn't do anything. I certainly didn't do anything. <clears throat> Taylor didn't do anything. <laughs> Calandros didn't do anything well, at all. I don't understand what he's talking about. I don't know yet. Uh, do y'all want me to rant? I you, can do it. Yeah, Let, I, I, give I, us a rant. You know what? You know what I want. I I, I want to hear the rant. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, bur- yeah. the Oak Hills Bourbon Club is getting loud. Getting rowdy. The drinks are loud. Lord have mercy. Goodness gracious. So one of the questions I was going to ask you, Taylor, was looking for the people who are trying to get into bourbon that want to find those bottles like the Blantons and all that kind of stuff. Like, what is your rant on dealing with that? Like, is there a certain way to approach for me? Like, I'm the common man trying to find something. What's the best approach to find one of those bottles without being a pain in your ass? <laughs> It's really easy. It's really simple. It, uh, uh, American dollars. Dollars. Yeah. Green. You spend them. Spend them green. Spend a lot of them. All right. And you get noticed. Or you can use American dollars. We'll eventually start taking Bitcoin too. Because apparently that's what <laughs> oh, I'm yes. doing now. Yes. Absolutely. Um, what about dog coins. Stonks. There, Stonks. there, there is no secret sauce. There's no nothing you got to say. There's no secret password. If you and I'm sure most of the accounts around town and in this country will agree that if oh, a customer yeah. comes in and spends enough money, they're going to be rewarded. Are you saying spend money on liquor? Anything, Come in, get man. anything, anything. Steak dinners for your family Not and a nice time, bottle just, of wine. If if you're a, if you're a regular customer and if you get no, you don't have to tell us that you're a regular customer. Right. We know you're a regular customer. Right. You know, one of my regular customers is Karen Maneri. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Sell I saw her in the Calandros parking lot two weeks ago. She and I was going to the DMV. But that, that's just an example. Is, is she that, lives right over here? Yeah, that's a prime yeah, example. She lives yeah. right around here. Yeah, or, uh, in, in that new little in that little the, cut around. Yeah. yeah, the little development over there. Um, but she's just an example because it's LSU podcast, whatever. But she is in the store three or four times a week. Yep. And I know it. I see her face. Yep. I, I mean, I know who she is, but I see her face and yep. she's in there. It's just an example, but she doesn't buy whiskey and stuff like that. Right. She buys whatever. Right. And I, I don't even know if Paul drinks whiskey. I don't know what he does. But, yep. Oh, um, I'd love to get Paul on here. Oh, I feel like he would sit back with a nice cigar. I think relax. he would too. He needs to relax. I know. Um, what I've heard Paul he drink. I don't know. I, I've heard he's 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 a little tense right now. I would uh, think he Jacques, just... We had Jacques Doucet on last night. Yeah. Uh, His face is a little red. Jacques did a, uh, in, you know, how he does impersonations. He did an impersonation of Paul Maneri <laughs> on our podcast, and I, I tweeted it this today, this morning, and I said it, it was just like a little brief thing. And he, and Jock texted me. He goes, "Hey, can you take that down? Because, because uh, Paul's been this? a little bit, he's been a little ornery about people like making fun of him. He got on, <laughs> he got on Ronnie rants apparently about oh, it. I love Ronnie. I Ronnie's know he got on Ronnie boy. rants about making fun of him a Ronnie, little bit, oh and uh, God. and so I was like, sure, I'll take it down. Ronnie yeah. rants. I'm so glad you said Ronnie rants. Yes, Ronnie. I forgot about Ronnie rants and uh, TK. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy. Ronnie lives in the neighborhood I'm living in currently in Denham Springs right now, Greystone. But anyway, I played baseball for Ronnie uh, my freshman year of college. In between uh, freshman and sophomore year, I was trying to get back into baseball. I broke my back my senior year at Catholic. So I was trying to get. Uh, to play baseball in college basically i had to sit out my whole freshman year anyway ronnie was my coach and ronnie is an animal 
Yeah, and he's he he's the man. He's <laughs> hilarious. He's one of the funniest. He's funniest so funny. People, man, we'd be sitting in the dugout. Uh, it just it, it'd be a, a thousand degrees outside. We're playing in a tournament, and Ronnie would just bust out with John Mayer. Just start singing. <laughs> What? We'd be miserable. Uh, everybody would be so Dying. hot, and we would just be rolling on the ground. Sometimes he would announce two or three innings just to, in the dugout. Yeah, it, it just it, he's just a, he just doesn't care about anything. That's the I love he's, it. He's, That's uh, the way he's to an live. awesome dude, and he played baseball at LSU, and he, he knows the stuff. But yeah, Ronnie's a good guy. I'm I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Ronnie. Yeah, well, a lot I, of memories. We we'll need to get Ronnie out here. Oh, God, um, yeah, he's not far from here. I think I, th- I don't know where he lives no, exactly. He, uh, Greystone. He lives in Grayson. Okay. He, he lives in Denham Springs. He lives f- five houses so, down from me right now. Okay. So, so we need to play um, a round of golf. He UA, would love to play Toronto golf. Jones, bourbon Club. Yep. On the- bourbon Club. And, um, and, and Ronnie's still really involved. I think he's the chairman or something, president of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Yes, he is. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. Super involved. With I, that there stuff. is a underground um, poker club. Oh. That is right down the street from Greystone. You probably know who I'm okay. talking about, and I'm not going to say who their name is, but um, I'll tell you after the show. But I, it was supposed to be this I, Friday. I don't talk about any of the going ons at Greystone. No, not at Greystone. No, it's like right down the street at their house. At, I don't talk about anything in no. Denham yes. Springs. Uh, <laughs> Denham Springs is a sanctuary. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, it's, it, this is where you get away from. I was born uh, and raised yeah, yeah. in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but I live in Denham Springs now. And <laughs> um, shout out to my wife and my, my, my in laws. Um, <laughs> I love Denham Springs, and, and it, we just want to keep it to us. My dad lives we in, don't want in Denham. Um, I, I'd love to go out there if I could find like something. I, my wife loves living in the middle of Baton Rouge. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, where are you at, Chris? I'm in the Shenandoah area, Corsi Jones Creek. Okay. So yeah, so you're out yeah, there. I'm out there. I'm close. Yeah. You're you're close. I'm close enough to you're where close. we could do like a ninth green at nine podcast at Grayscone and just see oh, we, we could do in. that. Yeah. I can get in touch with Greystone easily yeah. and get that. Sounds happening. like we need to do a late afternoon round followed by a couple of bourbons. I think so. I, I played think Greystone yesterday. This may it's evolve a into a Durante Jones bourbon slash golf podcast. I'm not mad at it. I'm yeah. not mad so at it. There's some funky holes out of Greystone. There um, are. That's true. But overall, the course is nice. And My dad courses... played at Greystone. My dad's a member at Greystone. Um, he played there today. He's, he, I mean, he's older. What's your dad's first name? David. Okay. So David Anderson, um, he he's still recovering from like some back and hip issues too. So he's hitting like a hundred, you know, a hundred score right now. But like, so yeah, a few he, strokes better than you, <laughs> probably <laughs> actually. So hey, I'm I'm pretty good around the green if I can get around the green. But it's like I'm I'm driver. Uh, Jack's on here. He's probably gonna laugh his ass off me even talking about this. I'm driver, uh, hybrid, 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 pitch and wedge, putter. That's typically every hole. Jesus so Christ! 30, yeah, 30, there is no iron cap, game that, that, at yeah. all. There is no iron. So you're oh, not no, playing in the scrambles with me. That's yeah. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, there's there's no. If I do play in a scramble, I hit first, <laughs> so you can see yeah. where I hit, and uh-huh. then it'll tell you like, can I launch it or whatever? Yeah. Me, uh, me and my dad <laughs> play in a lot of uh, just like like AG uh, Associated Grocers. They have a bunch of tournaments and shit, and they always know me and my dad want to play. My uh, my dad's a big golfer. He played golf today. He he plays golf twice a week with a bunch of old guys. But <laughs> every time I play golf, with my dad, I, I hate playing golf. With my dad. And most people would probably enjoy playing golf with their dad. But anyway, for scrambles, <laughs> um, because I got to work with my dad, and it's just it, – it, it, and he, yeah. he bitches the whole time on the golf course. And I, when I go play golf, I want to not – I mean, I do bitch at myself, but he's just very vocal about it and just makes for a not-so-fun experience. But scrambles, he always – He's always the last to hit, and he always makes sure that the guys that aren't supposed to be out there go and hit first, and it's it's embarrassing. Do you, do you, have you played with Matt Muscona? I haven't played with Matt, no. No, you haven't. I'm surprised. Is Matt a Matt, big golfer? Matt Matt plays he golf. He can play. Matt, but Matt's very busy. He is busy. No doubt. People, and I'll say this about Matt. People think Matt works from 3 to 6 p.m. every day. No. Monday to Friday. Yeah. No, that's not. Matt way. is in the studio at 9 o'clock in the morning, yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning. It, whether it, it, 
the guy works. He starts in the morning with his little his little Facebook yep. show. Yeah, which is a big deal now. It's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Um, but he works his ass off. He's he's worked really really hard to get to the posi- position he's in, and and I'm not just saying that because I'm on a show and yada yada yada. Sure, I yeah. have seen him physically working, and he yep. does it every single day. He he works his ass off. Yeah, very meticulous to um he does a lot of prep which it's not three three to six p.m show no, for no him. It's absolutely a, not it's an all-day thing and, and it, then he does like shows at night and stuff like that's, all kinds of extra stuff dude i know like I, I have a full-time job and i'm doing like um we have we have since we're on the subject was our first podcast we did and it was just three guys and we're just kind of fooling around and yeah. then it, but we would do it like every Sunday and that became something I didn't have to edit that one. Right. Well, then when we got to once, one team, one podcast, I edit that one and it was mm-hmm. like, okay, this is a little bit more. Yeah. And then like this one, and yeah. it, but I had to figure out a way to where, okay, I could do this like efficiently to still where I can still do a day job. You yeah. know, like Dude, it's always blown my mind. Some of the people that do this, this kind of like gig without, you know, and I'm like, what do you fucking do for a living? Like, dude, how are you on like that's social what my, my media wife all day me, long? So I told her I was coming to, I was coming to do this with you today, and I was like, yeah, this is gonna be a thing. We're gonna start doing this little whiskey podcast, talk about bourbon and sports. And she's like, dude, you barely have time to do yeah, anything. I know. She's like, how are you? So I don't have kids, so yeah. that's I think that's one of the differences yeah. that I'm able to do. I got a toddler because, and I got a pregnant I wife, and it's right. uh. She's like, what are you, what, what are you taking on these days? I'm yeah, like, right. Look, you know. And I started this during COVID because yeah. it was perfect. It was a great release. Like I needed, I, it's either this or therapy for yeah. me. Like I got to do something. <laughs> I got to talk to somebody. I'd rather uh, not spend a hundred, hundred dollars well, an hour. Well, let's be honest. You were drinking bourbon regardless. That's so true. Now it's That's like a true. productive drinking Exactly. Experience. If we can do it so, at the same yeah. time, you know, yeah, and I'm exactly. not, I'm still not an alcoholic. So we're right. good. So yeah. no. if you do it, if you do it for a hobby, you're not an alcoholic. I've, I've learned that from a lot of <laughs> my customers <laughs> yeah yeah like okay you drank three quarters of a bottle of bourbon on a tuesday and you've done that in the last seven days <laughs> yeah man but i you know it, yeah. the taste and notes were she was just really good it's and creamy I'm like, it's creamy and chewy you and- tell your wife that that you're doing okay and everything and uh I, i'm not gonna judge you I, I enjoy you spending money here but um <laughs> yeah, it's a hobby. It's a hobby for a lot of guys. No, but bourbon, I, dude. Bourbon is just blown up, and it's crazy. And the train just has not stopped rolling. I talk about it with Matt all the time. He asked me when it's going to stop, and because because craft beer, craft beer goes, yeah. came up, yeah, right. and it's it, it's going back settled down. down. Yeah, and I thought bourbon was going to take the same kind of route, but there it's i i don't see an end in sight there was something about uh so i went to um lexington to woodford distillery um this has got to be four or five years ago now but i remember during that time when i went to lexington i went to liquor barn have you ever been to yeah, liquor barn? barn it's oh my uh, God, similar so to a total wine or exactly Specs. so, so it's, like, it's like heaven Total Wine yeah. coming into town. It, it, I don't know exactly when that's supposed to open. Do you? You, you probably know. Yeah, there's supposed to be yeah, one that no. opens. I go to Calandros. We're not going to do that. Yeah. Calandros is yeah. our guy, yeah. so we're not going to do go it. Go to Total Wine. It's cool. Um, they, they were supposed to open at some point this year, and I heard it got pushed back. Um, and the location they're supposed to be going in is absolutely atrocious. Terrible. It's and the I'm old at, uh, Segan movie theater. The, the yeah, the Office Depot. That that little area right there. Yeah, right, right. Um, which is overrun with. Um, vagrants and yes, absolutely right by that racetrack over there, which is really bad. Yeah, but more power to them. They're going to have a lot of theft, and um, I'm rooting for it. Terrible, ter- <laughs> yeah, terrible place for that. It's going to be like my Walmart, about- my, y'all. My Walmart on Corsi and Jones Creek is locked up. Yeah. in a case. Yeah, and they have to. I know exactly unlock what you're it with about. the key, and they have to bring it to the cashier for you. This is like for a bottle of Crown. Like this is not fancy. Yeah, and I'm like, good God, like this it, is crazy. It, you know, when when a store is like that, it, it takes away from the shopping experience no doubt. for the customer. And it's a necessity for some places and because they don't have the manpower or they don't want to have the manpower right. to police it. And I, me, my dad, the way we view things, it, it's 
we want customers to be able to touch and feel and look yep. and, and 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 not have to get somebody to come unlock a cabinet yep. um and, and, right. and, and it takes more manpower and it takes uh our employees being on top of things and they are um i mean you can tell when somebody's in there and up to no good yep it's pretty easy to tell with our clients spot it yeah you're right um so but we try to make the shopping experience enjoyable and and, and that's what makes I think that's what set, separates local places like us and other places around town better to shop at than a big box store. I mean, yeah, it feels like home. Not gonna get it, that. It, feels like home. it felt different in Lexington that way too, where I went to a couple of different liquor stores there and it was just like, like this is just a way of life over yeah. there. And like liquor barn was one where I went in and like, I mean, bourbon guy, but like, I mean, it's two aisles full of bourbon. Yeah. Like, of any bourbon that you'd ever want and and, and, and those stores are beautiful and, I, and i'm not gonna knock it i i walk into a liquor barn or a total line or specs and i'm like damn yeah i wish I, I wish i had this much space but as far as individual skews and the individual bottles we'll compete with any of them we just don't we we, we, we don't have 15 facings of crown Royal. sure right, right. exactly uh, it, I think that. somebody had told me, I think it was there. We were talking about Blanton's in particular because I was grabbing all the Blanton's they had um, at the time. But like, I feel like I'm more savvy on what Blanton's is now than what I was then. But I think somebody was telling me that the Japanese market was buying a lot of um, a lot of bottled bourbons from Lexington or from Kentucky uh straight from the distilleries and they were shipping it over to japan to japan well and a lot of the distilleries are now owned by the japanese that's right okay um jim beam suntory yeah. is one of the big ones suntory okay. owns how long uh, ago was that do you think uh, uh suntory bought that six seven years ago where okay they, where they bought jim beam they bought maker's mark um but the the Jim Beam people, Fred No and his son Freddie. Fr uh, Fr Fred No's grandmother was a Beam, and he is still the master distiller, and he's still involved with the company. The Japanese just own it. Um, but the reason the Japanese are buying all these places because Jap Japan is a gigantic market for whiskey. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's kind of what I heard. Question is, was like, is the market similar? It's very popular. Here, very huge. It's yes. Huge. Huge. Is it as big as it's it is here, or is, are we big, getting to where uh, they are? I, I don't, I mean, I've never been to Japan and I've never experienced it, but from what I've heard and from the what treatment they get from these distilleries, it's bigger than it is in the United yeah. States. Yeah. Wow. Um, there's a lot more people that are willing to spend a lot of money on things. And um, I wonder if our American whiskeys are like top of the line for them. They are tough to get. They are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, stuff that would be easy to get here. Like at a Calandro, say, is going to be something that's sure. an aftermarket markup for them. I believe that some some of that is, and and, and vice versa. Yeah, there's stuff that's easier to get over there that you wouldn't believe you could just pick up, right. um, in Japan or yeah. even Europe or something like that, you, that 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 you can't find here. I have zero Japanese whiskey in my liquor cabinet. So what what do I need to go get you this know, week? You to know, taste? I, I've been to um uh what's the what's your restaurant on government? Soji. Love Soji. Soji. Uh yeah. the my parents were getting takeout from Soji tonight. Oh so good. Talk about that place. Shit. And I'm surprised I, or, I forgot the name of it. But Soji, Soji uh an old fashioned at yep. Soji. They make it with the Japanese whiskey. Yep. It's fantastic. Yep. Um Hibiki? I think it I think that's right. Hibiki's a big one. Um the Yamazakis are big. The Yamazakis are hard to get. Twelve and eighteen. Um what's something I can find this week? Hibiki Harmony. Habiki Harmony, something mm, I can go find. It's, little, it's a white box. Okay. It's sixty-ish dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a good intro to Japanese whiskey. It's a what blend. is that flavor profile similar to? Like, what am I getting out of that? Like, what is what's the taste? Well, it's it's like I said earlier, and I said on Matt's show today. I, I the best way to describe Japanese whiskey to someone that hasn't tried it is if uh, Scotch and bur american whiskey bourbon had a baby okay there's subtle hints of smoke and peat yeah. and 
and stuff. That you would love it because you love that uh, smoked old fashioned. Yeah, you know sure. that kind of that kind of feel. Yeah. I think you would love that kind and, of. Bourbon. And the reason I think that it's like that is because the Japanese don't have a whiskey. Yeah, they are taking influences from people that have had whiskey for a very long time, Scotland, Ireland, and um america and making their own but they're taking those influences and incorporating them into their own stuff yeah yep um and that's what i think it is and that's what they're doing um which i think is cool will take things to the next level i mean yeah i mean they they are and like like i said they're they're not just buying it they are buying distilleries yeah um they once they get a hold of something they just they they want it that, that that's I guess that's how the Japanese work. So, um, yeah, it's it's crazy. All right. So we're about an hour and 45 in. So Damn. time I know. flies when you're having fun. It really does. I love it. Um, we can keep going if you want. It's up to you all. But um, <laughs> we may have a ch- uh, somebody has entered the chat. So do we never get the rant? That's the question. I well, here we may have a rant coming right now. So let me let me enter in. You guys hear this though. That's the thought the problem. Okay, you bring it. Yeah. So, all right. What's up, Dicky P? Is entered the chat. <laughs> Dicky, can you hear me? Dick Vital. Dicky V. It's not you because you don't have the link. Dicky V. Upset City is what he said in the private chat. Who's LSU baseball playing? They're at ULL. UL, yeah, ULL Lafayette. Dickie Do V, can you hear us? Uh, Louisiana. Yep. Hello. Dickie V, you're on live. You're live with Taylor Calandro. Ask me a question. LSU 4, ULL 1, end of the fifth inning. I'm renew- removing right you from the stream unless you talk. I took him off. All right, so okay. I don't know why I don't know why he interviewed if he wasn't going to talk. Um, he got the stage fright. State, yeah, I think it might. It gets to everybody. It happens. Um, we can keep doing this if you want, or we can stop and we'll regroup next week, and we'll do this at Bogies. Um, I'm live excited stream. to get back to Bogies. Uh, with a pregnant <laughs> wife at home, I don't have a good reason. To go to bogies. Other okay, than so that's podcast. So I can. I'm a. Uh, that's the yeah. thing. I can go anywhere at any time because I'm not it. locked down. Yeah. Right. I get it. So get it. you are married though. I am married, yeah. but geez. you're locked down. Let's, she's gone right now. She's not even he's here. Talking big smack because she's not here. Yeah, she's not even here. <laughs> yeah, she's not even here. It's always enjoyable to hear a married man say, "I'm not, not locked, locked down." down. Exactly. Yeah. And you well, know that his wife is thing. nowhere to be found. Right yeah, now. it's that's Wednesday. I'm gonna go to bogies. I can't wait to tell her that. Oh, we are all locked down to a certain extent. Oh, I, no matter what you say, you've got to run it past the boss. No, you're truth. right. You're right. Yeah. And they, they know that um, my boss is um, a real boss. So uh, she'll, she'll definitely put the chains on for sure. No doubt. <laughs> um, so, well, well, I think this is a good place to stop though. We'll stop this. We'll, we'll regroup. We'll, we'll bring you on back in. Taylor, whenever you want. Oh, so, I'd, I'd, I'd love to come back on. I enjoyed it. Okay, so if we set up at uh, Bogies, maybe next week, well, I'll get with Clayton over there, maybe on the patio, depending on the weather. Yep. If not on the patio, if the weather's bad, we'll get on the stage at Bogies. Um, they have a limitation right now on how many people they can bring out there. Yep. So I'm hoping we can. We only had like what thirty or forty people in the crowd tonight watching. Yes. Live. So it's. Uh, I, I'm I'm hoping right. like so they're struggling. Yeah, like there's bars that are just struggling yeah. right now, like Man, especially those guys. Like I'm, I'm glad you said that because the restaurants and bars are struggling. Yep, big time. Get out there and spend money at restaurants and bars. Yep. Get takeout. You see the, all these bullshit commercials that say order out, but no, do it. Yep. Yeah. Because these 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 places need support, and if you don't, they're not going to be there after all the shit is over with. Yep. That's right. So and, and you're going to get yeah. a lot of commercial bullshit. You're yeah, and I had the money that can invest I hope in a you restaurant. Like red and it ain't gonna be what it's like. Yeah. Oh no, not Red Lobster. No, 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 no Red Lobster. No uh, Olive Garden. We're not no. doing that. Um, so unless you want to eat that garbage every day of your life, if you want to eat out, then you get dude, out and support local spend restaurants. Spend that stimmy. He was telling me. 
Joe's Crab Shack is closed now. I know. I can't believe it. I can't believe I, it. I can't believe they made it as long I as they did. did. I know. They closed so, though. Yeah, they're closed. I think. I think Joe's <laughs> Crab Shack. <laughs> calm down back there. There is a. a we got hole, a rowdy crowd going. There's on a here. hole in the roof at Joe's Crab Shack. I is have there no. Really? I, yes, there is a tarp over the roof. Wow. I have no idea what happened there. But yeah, it's closed. Oh, wow. Um, but what I what I was hoping I've is, only eaten there one time. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but but I no, I've I, only eaten there. I think it's one. I, I ate there twice, one time like when I was ten a years kid ago, and I ate a hot dog. Oh. <laughs> I've I've quite literally never eaten at Joe's Crab. It's gross. Yeah, no, thank you. It's terrible. Why no, the hell gross. would you eat there no. in Louisiana? Yeah, no. But I was at I was at Bogey's the other day, and he was telling me some of the restrictions. They can only allow fifty people total at a time. Wow. Uh, they have to be on the patio. Wow. And that's when we walked out there and I was like, holy shit, when did this happen? <laughs> but they can only have 50 at a time anyway. Yeah. Um, Tigerland is closed totally. Uh, because and it's the, all the limitations are because they don't serve food. Correct. If they served food, It'd then everything would open back up for them. Yeah. So yeah. I was talking to them about walk-ons. Like walk-ons gonna be packed during LSU baseball games, but like yeah, but bogeys can't have more than 50 people in there yeah, because crazy. they don't serve food the, the laws are ridiculous with this can we do a durante jones bourbon club from the parking lot of fred's yeah i mean I, that, that that just seems like it'd be a great backdrop uh that or uh, so they were talking about doing uh they do crawfish on yeah. sunday nights at yeah. bogey's and they do it at, at, at fred's as well yeah. and they'll have a huge crowd whenever they do crawfish but they have to do it in an outside area to where they can have a certain amount of people we need to get there but yeah so that that was one of the things we were talking about was whenever they do crawfish having a big um having a big show no out there springtime we'll, showdown for sure. So we'll get you back on, Taylor. Sure. We appreciate your time tonight, man. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. We appreciate everybody that's lo uh, logged in tonight. Uh, remember, like and share all this. Uh, we appreciate uh, Calandros being involved with this and Bogies. Um, any chat, any questions you guys have, reach out to us at uh, DJ Bourbon Club or One Team One Podcast. Let us know if there's any feedback you guys have for any of this. Uh, we would love to kind of keep this free flowing and see how we can uh, improve in the in the future. We'll get our our, our intros going right That's next right. time. <laughs> um, that was a little Real snafu. Things. Snafu. I'm outside tonight on the patio. Uh, probably my Wi-Fi was sucked, um, but uh, we appreciate everybody again, and uh, we will see you guys next week Let's on see. the Durante Jones Bourbon Club. Cheers. Woo! Oh yeah.